Okay, you guys, definitely stop what you're doing. With his background in drawing, Rob the Original sees art truly in everything around us, from his now famous haircuts to salt, wood stain, even food. His talents amaze everyone who sees him and his art. Uh, I've never seen anything like this before. Rob the Original is joining us now in our studio with a taste of his salt art. Rob, okay, this is incredible. You're based in San Antonio. And this all started, what, back in 2006? 2006, yeah. That's that's really where I started doing portraits on, on people's hair. And from there, you know, with social media, when it came about, I was able to, to display my artwork on social media. Once I started getting recognized for it, then I wanted people to not see me only as a barber, but I wanted people to know that I was an artist. Absolutely. Because ever since I, I can remember, I've been drawing, so art has been my passion. And art, and barbering was one of my art mediums, but now, um, I started doing art with like other things, like dusty windows on cars. I started oh. using like pizzas, food, <laughs> and then people would always ask me like, "What are you gonna do next? What is it, Rob? What is it?" So that's when I started trying to think of ideas. Still to this day, I'm always thinking of new ideas to do. Listen, my car art, out yeah. in the parking lot is gonna be your next canvas. Am I right or wrong? <laughs> it's a little dirty. A little dirty. Just I little. know. Can we just talk about that? Okay, this is sand. How long have you been working on this? I've been working on this for about an hour. Or salt. I'm sorry, yeah. we were talking about sand, but it's us. It's, it's us. It's so cool. And it looks like us. It totally does. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, and you did this. I mean, we, we essentially watched these being created before our eyes. How long does it normally take you to create something on a more difficult surface, like someone's head? That's a longer something, process, right? Yeah, yeah. the, the, the haircut is a little bit, it has more steps. Um, so that does take about like two to three hours to do on a, on a haircut. Oh with gosh. with detail, obviously I've done them on stage. When I do, I do educational uh, education as well. I travel, you know, around the world doing um, teaching people how to do portraits on haircuts. Um, but so I had to do one hour demonstration usually. So it's kind of a rush portrait. But when I take my time and I'm zoned out, like at home, I definitely it takes me about three hours. It oh is so unbelievable. The talent and the vision that you have, Rob, is so incredible. I mean, we're looking at your work here too, and then. Once it's done, I you, mean, you just wipe it away. You wipe it away, and I did yeah. say, I did say sand earlier. You're working with salt, but I said, how do you preserve this? Whoa. And you said, now that you're trying things with sand. Yes, actually, um, I had a couple people reach out to me saying, hey, I want to preserve one of these. I've actually done some artwork for some celebrities as well, um, like Jay Leno, like um, really, like, yeah, like um, Eddie Murphy as well. Courtney so, and Derek. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and you guys, of course, and. Um, so whenever they wanted me to preserve it, I tried preserving it before and, it, and it's salt. So it dissolves when you put a liquid over it. Yeah. So then I was like, what can I do that's similar to salt? So then I thought about sand. And then when I went to the store and I got white sand and I actually glued it on a black canvas, I saw that it worked. But then I was like, why not do a color sand portrait? So, so cool. now I actually do color paintings with with uh, with color sand. You are and so actually talented. Preserve it. Thank I mean, you. it's so amazing to Thank me. Thank you. And I love that you're tweaking this while they're upside I know. down. Right? I know. You, can't even see yeah. <laughs> you also the hairlines, you know? Salsa, <laughs> ketchup. I mean, using food, you create some pretty incredible things. Yeah. Well. What is this, a lime here? That's a lime, yeah. I did that for the Mexico, because um, whenever they're at, at the World Cup, yeah. And that, that's tortilla art. I actually burned the tortilla images. And that's fur, so I just carve it like if it was clipper. It's it's synthetic fur, by the way. Is there really anything you can't use? Just clothes. Um, well, I think that art's everywhere, so yeah. it's endless with the things you can actually do art. I mean, look at it, like we're surrounded by art, you know? That this this jacket is it's art, you know, this table, everything is art, so. I figured that like, you can do art out of pillows if you wanted to, you know what I mean? You so. have such an incredible attitude, Rob, being able to see art in everything around us. And if yeah. you haven't followed him on Instagram, oh. check him out. There's a reason why he has 653,000 followers on Instagram. Look at that. Look at the haircut. That's the Taj Mahal right there on the left. I believe the Last Supper top yeah. left. The Great and Wall of China. I did the, the Birth of Jesus, Hollywood. Oh, my oh, goodness. Queen Latifah. Whoa. So was this a, a mega fan who had Queen Latifah? In his scalp? We, yes, and we were at a, I was invited to her show when she had a, sh a TV show. Right. Um, this was about, probably like f four years ago. Wow, yeah. Ellen DeGeneres, Eminem there. It, listen, I know you said it takes three hours to create something like this, so next time you stop by, maybe, I don't know, a little Courtney Zavala action could be created in my 
and my scalp. What do That'd you think? That'd be cool. I'm, I'm yeah. down to do it. Clearly let me he know. can get a job. Aren't you supposed to do something? No. I know, but it, it takes a while for you to be able to do something. Well, right? we can still do a little something, you know. That's, I could definitely get something done in a few minutes. Really? Yeah, you down? Oh, okay, well, why don't I sit down because I think we got to take a commercial break soon. Okay. But I'll go ahead and sit down and you can get started while we do this. Are we really doing this? Yes, we are doing I it. I brought my Amazing. stuff just in case. Look at that, all underneath the cloth. Wow. I love it. Oh, <laughs> check out your gold little clipper there. Yeah, this is nice, isn't it? Okay, get started. Okay, I can't wait for this. Me it's too. it's so cool being an adult and being able to do whatever you want with your hair. Right? I'm so Not excited. Worried about school. Yeah. Like no one's going to tell you you can't come up. That is true. What, what are you going to do? Um, well, why don't we do the logo of the show? That would be cool, right? Okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah. let's do it. Okay, I love let's it. get started. And after the break, by the way, I mean, I know we've always been told not to play with our food, but that's exactly what you're going to do, right, Rob? We're definitely going to play with some food. I love it. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. Derek's going to get some artwork in the back of his head, side and back. And then when we come back, we're going to see what we did with crackers, some white bread, I think some salami. Who do you think that portrait is? Oh, y'all, check that out. We are back with Rob the Original. 653,000 followers on the IG, and it's no surprise considering his work is one of a kind, including a little HL logo in the side of your head. You truly just did this during the commercial break. And Look our commercial break was a two-minute commercial break, by the way. Wow, Rob, I, I love it. Thank you, thank it you. It looks super cool. It's so thank awesome. You. you have spent years truly mastering this craft, and we've transitioned the tables from your salt uh, picture, the, the portrait that you did of Derek and I, to this buffet table. What's happening? Well, now we're going to do art with food. Okay. So yeah. it's actually just kind of like, <laughs> you know. It's text. Yeah. That is so cute. It's adorable. You know how your parents always tell you not to play with your food? Well, right? today we're allowed to play with our food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at that. So, there of course, Tex is. is our beloved show dog. But when you set out to create an image out of food, Rob, describe your process. Because I look at this setup here and I see bread and crackers and all the raw ingredients. But you somehow see a work of art. So I is do. the image already in your head when you're creating it? Well, um, not exactly. It, sometimes it could be, but a lot of the times to make it easier on me, I, I like to look at images and kind of just, you know, build something out of what I see. Okay. So basically... So you're looking at a photo on your phone of text. Yes, I am. So here it is. You can see it, right? Yeah. And so I was thinking, what can we use? So as red, I'm going to use bologna. Everybody's right? favorite. For the eyes and the nose, I'm going to use chocolate, you know, little tiny chocolate pieces. Yeah. And for him, I'm going to use um, bread. So loaves of bread. And for the, cr the crackers, I'm going to use for the ears. Oh, my gosh. It's pretty genius. And peanut butter cups and bologna, they really do go well together. All right. Yeah. So what do we joke. need to do? You guys ready to... <laughs> it's a joke. All right. Let's, yeah. let me laugh. let's get this plate as an example. Is this on? Is yeah. It on? <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna do what you did, right? So we're first, gonna try to emulate oh. it. Yeah, so first you're gonna lay out uh, bologna all the way around. Okay. Oh. That's our red chair. Right, that's the red chair. Okay. I didn't realize. And we if you run out of red, three. <laughs> yeah. And if you run out, what were you gonna say? There's more over there, more um, bologna or ham as well. Let me get okay. Some. And then. A couple more pieces. Okay, and yeah. then you have to do the bread, right? Yeah, let's put some of these on here. Oh yeah, mine are thicker. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now now what we're gonna do, we're gonna get one of these and just rip the pieces off from the edges. Okay. Right, all the That's way around. All the crust off. All the crust off, okay. yeah. And we're wow. gonna put one down here like this. So if someone wanted to try this at home, I mean, you could try this with your kids and just get a photo of, of them, right? Most definitely, yeah. I think what you need to do is just basically just use food that, that are basically subject to them as color, as coloring kind of, you know what okay. I mean? Like, so here's two there. It's so crazy. Let's do um, another. So seriously, did you play with your food when you were a kid? No, I did not. No, my, my dad would really be bad if I did that. <laughs> so you're making up for lost time now. <laughs> yes, you can say that. Okay, this way, I think. Okay, right? so this one will be here, yeah. I think we need, I don't know if we need another piece of bread. I'm creating his his little snout. Okay, I gotta do so, this one here. Oh, man. Well, you're pretty good, you're pretty good, look at that. You guys are doing great. Not bad. I'm going to Thank you. over. Sorry, Derek. This is so fun. I honestly didn't know <clears throat> we were doing this today. And I'm 
I'm glad we are. What if, oh my gosh, what if like you made dinner for your husband? <laughs> this was home. it. And he's like, he'd be like, what, what is, what did you make? You're like, what, what are you talking about? This is like, it's delicious. This, this part is hard. Let's see. <clears throat> I don't know. Okay, what that's cool. And then you can okay? kind of like, yeah, that's that's good. Okay. You can do it like this, and then you put the ears and put the eyes. Okay. For the eyes, I like to do this. Um, I like to kind of like put my fingers down, and that's so what like I'm really oh, good to make like, space for. Make it. Like a, yeah. Okay. And Rob, there's no specific order that someone <laughs> needs to go in, right? I mean, you're no. Your food. They're yeah, you're rules. basically just have fun with it. It's so cute. It, I know it's I think very yours relaxing looks way better too. Than, tux, than mine. And this is uh, this is just like white bread, right? I mean, this if someone's white using bread. a grainy wheat bread, it might not be as yeah. stretchy, right? No, I think it still works. It's just like this is just for the color. I don't I know. I mean, if it's gonna be like a brown, you know, brown uh, color dog, then you can um, use the the brown bread, you know. I so am let's get some some crackers. So into this. Yeah, I think. Why is that bad? Rob, I think we did it. Courtney, yours looks awesome. You want to bring Tex in so yeah, we can I feel see like it? Tex should be the judge. I know. <laughs> Here, Tex, this come is on, buddy. So cute. Thanks, Carlos. Oh, yours Ooh. looks so. His oh. face looks so good. Okay, Texie. Hey. What do you oh, think? Oh, don't let him eat the bread. I'm not gonna let him eat the bread. Let's just see which one he seems to be more interested oh, he's in. he's totally loving mine. So far, he's liking yours, <laughs> but he's sniffing out mine as well. Don't what do you think, Texie? And, we turn and it of course, way. Rob's like the best of all time. I don't know. That is so cute. It's, you know what? I, I think it's a three-way tie or a four-way tie because he seems to love them all, Rob. I think you guys did great. Thank you. Really Thank good. you. Tex is so well-behaved. Look, he didn't even try to lunge and bite those. Because he's in awe. <laughs> He's in awe of As our we beautiful are of you, works Rob, of art. Seriously, you're a true artist and so impressed with what you've been able to do today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It was fun doing this with you guys. Well, and thank you for being such a nice guy because we have all kinds of people on the show all the time. And it's great to meet someone who is not only like super famous, but also really cool. Yeah. So thanks for yeah, being really Thank cool. you. Appreciate that. That's very nice of you. Appreciate that. And willing to share your art with all of, course, of us. Of course, of course. Well, come back and visit us here at Houston Life anytime. And uh, Tex is a fan as well. And in the meantime, of course, follow Rob the Original on Instagram. And you can keep up with him on our website as well, HoustonLife.tv. Tex is officially munching on my bracelet now. Love it. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next on Houston Life, we're going inside the Houston SPCA's Animal Ambulance. How you can get an animal immediate help in case of an emergency. Welcome back. When you see an animal that's been badly hurt, hit by a car, or in distress, the Houston SPCA is always there to help. Well, their animal ambulance operates at 24 hours a day, seven days a week, making sure animals in need get immediate medical attention. We joined um, one of the rescue workers on a ride along to get a first hand look at the impact they're making. I'm with the rescue ambulance. We are a 24 hour service throughout the whole Harris County area, pick up animals that are injured or in distress. So a typical call basically consists, we either get the call from our answering service or through our call center. Once we have a location and a number of where the animal is located, we usually load up our vehicles and start heading to the location. Once we get to the location, it will find out where the animal is. Once the animal's located, we'll try to approach the animal. Of course, sometimes the animal's afraid, you know, because they don't know that we're out there trying to help them. So we have to basically take it slow, trying to make the animal feel comfortable. Once we are able to establish that, we'll pick up the animal, put it in one of our kennels in the vehicle, and we'll rush back to the shelter. Once we get back to the shelter, we just load him in and Head him back in there to have him seen by a vet. Most people don't realize there were campus for all animals. I know most people, when they see our ambulance, they usually think of a dog or a cat maybe might be inside, but they don't realize that Houston is the largest city. And of course, being the, the largest city, we have so many animals within the city. And of course, you know, we are an all-campus for animals and as long as the animal's injured and it needs our help we'll go out there and rescue that animal you know of course people don't realize the important job that we do it wouldn't be possible without the donations 
So when I get to the location, they're asking for help. Um, sometimes, of course, they're very really vocal by them crying for help. Sometimes you see it in their eyes. Um, you see the tears that they're crying and asking for that, help me. And that's what motivates me to pick up the animal and tell it, I am here to help you. I'm here to rescue you. As long as we're picking up one animal and saving that one life, that's everything in the world for, for us. Most people are surprised that we do provide a service for free, no charge, and everything that we do is through the donations of everybody, and that's how we're still able to continue running this rescue and basically run it 24 hours. They do such great work. And joining us now is Julie Kenstall, Houston SPCA Vice President of Communications and Marketing. Julie, welcome, and you have little Stacy. Hey, with I you. brought a friend who needs a home. This is Stacy, Jack Russell Mix, She's nine smiling. years old. Look at her little she face. She's so cute. And she rocks a leash. Let me just say, nine years old, I don't know about that, but she is amazing. You know you like to maybe do a little run around the block and your yes. dog stops every three seconds? This one just keeps going. So if you want a dog who knows how to sit, take a treat, Stacy is your gal. Jack Russells are great dogs. They really are. They love to be outside. They yes. love to run. And they're great. They can learn really cool tricks, too. They're very smart. I would take this one, but I have a Jack Russell mix at home. So, Aww. yeah. But, yeah, I'm, I'm really loving Stacy. She is a great dog. How yeah. did she get to you guys? Do we know? Yes. So she came off our ambulance, and she was found with, a, thankfully, a benign tumor. We just removed that tumor a couple weeks ago, but she is ready for adoption. Oh, I can see the staples yeah. in her torso yes. there. So our ambulance came, rescued her, our vets took good care of her, and you know, our, our adoption fees actually helped pay for some of her medical. But when she gets adopted, her adoption fee, and she's a senior, so only $45, yeah. will go towards some of another animal that is medically challenged too. Oh. So. Paying it forward is what our ambulance does. Well, and senior dogs are such great companions. I know a lot of times we talk about the puppies and the kittens yeah. that are up for adoption, but you guys have all kinds of animals that need a home. And at nine years old, Stacy has a lot of life left in her. She has a lot of life, and she's, guys, you can see, she's got plenty of energy. You know, but she knows the rules pretty well. Sometimes yeah. she knows. She's been very patient in the in the green room. Yes. She's been hanging out. Um, she's had quite an exciting day already. But um, yeah, she knows how to sit. She knows how to take a treat. She knows the rules. She, you know, if you're ready for a dog who like knows what to do in the dog world. Yeah. Yeah, She's super senior sweet. is amazing. And by the way, you have obviously at the SPCA many animals that are waiting for their forever home. And of course, the before and after photos of um, some of the animals that have been treated on yes. that amb ambulance. And this is Donkey, right? That is Donkey, who happens to be a terrier mix. Mm. Donkey came to us, had just this really weird gash in her, in, in her leg, and there were no other fractures, no other injuries, and we thought, okay, well, we're just gonna fix this up and, and off you go to a new home. And so that worked out really well. And we had another dog, Bubbles, who came to us who just had a serious case of mange. I mean, bald, you know, oh, head no. to tail bald. And um, yes, Bubbles actually got lots of medication. <gasps> and That's wow. not the same dog. That is Look the at same that. dog. We picked both those animals up Beautiful. from our ambulance. And again, you know, it's important to note that these are injured or distressed strays that we are able to pick up because the city does pick up strays but they don't have the capabilities to take in animals that have been injured so if you see an animal that's been hit by a car and understandably you don't have thousands of dollars to maybe go towards an animal you don't know 713-880 help yeah we're here to help you guys do such great work and that ambulance runs 24 7 thank you julie for stopping Thanks, by guys. and uh if you do see an injured animal just call that number again 713-880 help if you'd like to learn more you can always visit their website houstonspca.org thanks again julie and good luck stacy good luck stacy she smells the food i love her smile <laughs> speaking of food that's right if you're hosting the big game a watch party at home after the break we have your ultimate party spread tips and nachos you can make all by yourself.
Well, we are just days away from the big game in Atlanta, but there's still plenty of time to plan your game day menu. Joining us today, Paul Miller, owner of Jack's Grill, on tips on you can have that ultimate party spread. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Love Great being here. Great to see you. Mm -hmm. Um, you, if you have a party, you gotta, you know, everybody gets parched. I think you start with the drinks, don't you? You, you definitely have to start with the drinks. May I pour you, may I pour oh, you a margarita here to, uh, We're to not get gonna going? stop you. Go for it. <laughs> Thought you'd never ask. You know what? I love it when I, when I arrive at a party. Courtney, here. Oh. You, you take the first taste. Got it. I always trust her judgment. When you arrive at a party and your host just hands you a nice cold drink, mm. that is the perfect way to begin the festivities, right? Absolutely. It's rule number one. Rule number one, and this is what your house margarita. This is actually a specialty margarita that we're doing with a uh, with the tequila that we've um, been featuring, Agave Oro, which is a completely organic uh, tequila. Ooh, oh. we've been featuring those at all the restaurants. Oh, I man. love it. That is so good. I have to say, Jack's Grill is one of probably the first restaurants I ate once I started here at Channel Two. Yeah. We would always go. That's where we kind of hit lunch and dinner, depending on the shift that we would go. And it never disappoints, ever. It, you know, it's been, we, we've, we've been in the neighborhood for 25 years. Yeah. We've had generations of families coming through and just hearing the positive comments and, you know, the great things that we're doing as far as donations and things like that. It's just, it, it's wonderful. We're, we're a neighborhood joint. We're not, you know, we're not off of I-10. We don't need a million cars a day. We're just that neighborhood restaurant that people can go to three or four times yeah, a week. Yeah, you guys really are part of the fabric of that community. And today you've brought some of your menu favorites Absolutely. to share with our viewers. So lay it all out for us. Yeah, you know, one of the things that we were talking about earlier is when you throw a party at your house, you don't want to put everything in one place because it creates a traffic jam. Right? Absolutely. Everybody, everybody just hangs out in the kitchen. So sure. what we did was we brought some specialty burgers that we do at the restaurant where we do a burger bar. You can put all the fixings out. You can put that, say, in the living room. Uh, we've got quesadillas. We've got our macho nachos. We've got fajitas over here. We do chicken wings. Oh my gosh! Um, it's just a, if you, if like I said, if you put them all in different places around your house, it, you're going to eat a chicken wing for uh, the for the Super Bowl, right? You're probably yes. going to get a burger at some point. And that's point, so, so smart because it always everybody congregates around that one table or the dining room. You got to spread it around to get make sure that people move around your Absolutely. house. Absolutely. And what we do is we put the bar at the front door. So literally as soon yeah. as you walk in, you grab a beer, you grab a cocktail. And then yeah. put some arrows. You just have yeah. arrows that kind of make you move through the house. Follow the yellow brick <laughs> road, right? Yeah. Well, and our food, you know, at our Super Bowl party, it may not look quite this elaborate. Um, that looks unbelievable, the onion rings on that burger. But maybe this will serve as inspiration for people if they want to create their own spread. Well, we can do it for you. Oh, or we could just order a tray yes. from you. You just order you know it, you order it from us. everything. Oh, there you we go. Do, we do quesadilla buffets. We do burger buffets. We can do a nacho bar. You can order fajitas really from any restaurant around town. You can put a, a big spread of fajitas out, and people just absolutely love it. And I, it's, you know, I it's do that foods. all the time. It's very mm. easy to eat, and all the kids love it as well. Okay, I see the stove is on. What are you cooking up here? This is the nachos? This is our this is our nachos. Do you guys want to you guys want to build them here? Yes, yeah, we'll do, do our best. Okay, so Look, we're moving down. We're like moving through the <laughs> yep. house. <We> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> So you do your hot first, okay. right? So we, you take a pile of nachos. The great thing about nachos are you can't screw them up. I mean, it's just whatever it is that you like, you put on you put on top. The only thing that we do a little bit differently is we do all the cold ingredients last. Okay. So we've got our we've got our beans here. If you want to just spoon some beans over okay. the top, get it yummy, on there. Yummy. These look so good. I love beans. So yummy. I could eat nachos every day of the week. Oh, yeah. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> yeah, not just for the big game. No. So one of the great things about Jack's is we've got the live fire mesquite grill, so it imparts great flavor so to the food. Good. So we've got we've got a little bit of beef fajita, some chicken fajita, some some bell peppers. We're gonna take this again. You do all the hot ingredients first. So you got your beans, and you pinto pour, beans, right? Yep, yes, ma'am. Okay. You pour all your hot ingredients across the top. That smells, smells so, so good. good. Here's here's your queso. You want to you oh, spoon, you wanna spoon oh, that on nice top? White queso. Oh. Yeah, and what we do is we use queso because it ends up kind of running in with everything, and it's nice and gooey, and you can scoop it up. When you use a hard cheese, it tends to, when it gets cold, it tends to kind of congeal on top, and they're, right. not, and they're not quite as good. Yeah. No. Now, it's whatever it the is. The cold ingredients. Like. Yep. Now, so would what you we do, pile this, if you're going to do a nacho bar, would you kind of do it like this, or let people do it as they go along? Oh, you let people do it as they okay. go along. So you put a plate at the very beginning, and then as they move down the move down the line I, I happen to love oh, avocado with cilantro too. some people don't but that goes right on top a little bit of sour cream. Keep talking, Paul. <laughs> you know the problem with these nachos is nobody's going to be watching the game. <laughs> that's that's sort of the that, that's sort of the goal when you're in the restaurant when you're in the restaurant business. You want uh, it's 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 art like you guys were talking about earlier. Oh my gosh, right? Life changing. And you're going to leave these here, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Everything's staying. You're welcome. You're welcome to to get a hold.
And quickly on the margarita, I know yes. you already had these mixed up for us, but show our viewers how, how you mix it up. The super, special touch. Super easy recipe. Every second is a quarter of an ounce. So five count, three count, float. So you count to 100? One and two and three and four and five, yes. It's you like can definitely dancing. do that, right? <laughs> Wait, every second is the quarter of an ounce. That's correct. This so, is our sweet and sour. So if you count to four, that's an ounce. Okay. It's very simple math, <laughs> folks. I, you lost me at counting. I don't know. <laughs> Just four. Have oh, man, those nachos drink. are so good. I know, so good. I like that you use the crystal cut glass, too. You like that? I do. <laughs> I do. I just think it looks awesome. A little bit of fresh lime juice on top. And a the float, floater. A float of Grand Marnier. Oh, yes. Dude, Paul, I think you just won the award for Cheers. mixing up the Cheers. fastest cocktail in Houston life history. <laughs> Congrats, my friend. Thank you so much for lunch. This is delicious. Thank you for having Fantastic. us. Fantastic. Great Okay, time. did you know all that Cirque du Soleil performers actually do their own makeup? They do. We just found this out. After the break, we're going to take you inside Luzia's costume department to see the magic behind the makeup. The magic that happens on stage at Cirque du Soleil's Luzia is nothing short of breathtaking. Some artists spend their entire lives training to perform the stunts. It really is magical, but they also have to go through the training to do their own hair and makeup. Who knew? I know. On our recent trip to Mexico City, we were invited backstage to the costume department to see how some of the looks come to life. Each night when the performers in Cirque du Soleil's Luzia take the stage, they step out with elaborate costumes and dramatic makeup. It's all part of the illusion that transforms the big top into another world. From human-sized birds to larger-than-life animals to a dress covered in computerized flowers that open and close, these aren't just any costumes, they are works of art. To make it all happen, the creative team at Luzia works hard behind the scenes. Amanda is the head of wardrobe. Head of wardrobe, what does that mean for Cirque du Soleil? Well, it means that we pretty much take care of anything that the artists wear on stage. So that includes costumes, their makeup, how they do their hair, uh, shoes, smaller puppets. Understand this show has a thousand costumes. It has a thousand pieces in the show every night. And then we carry the, about, roughly about the same, maybe a little bit more, maybe like 1,200 in backup. Okay, so because we're on the road full time, we need to be able to have backups and, you know, if something goes wrong or a dry cleaner destroys the costume, which happens sometimes, we have to be prepared. You know, there's water in this show, yes. so the challenge for costumes mixed with water? Yes. During the creation phase, a lot of was design and what textiles we were going to use, things like that, was really researched because we wanted things that would work well in the water and wouldn't, you know, hang kind of funny or, or limpy. And at the same time, it helped the artists stay warm. <laughs> right, <laughs> Because right. they are underwater. So it really kind of became a new level that we've not really had to deal with on a touring show. We've got all these different head pieces, right? I'm guessing these are head pieces yes. over here. Yes, we have swordfish and tuna. Okay. Um, that are surprisingly light for what you would imagine if you want to hold it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's light as a feather. Yeah. For wearing on their head, <laughs> we wanted to make sure that they, you know, that it was comfortable. And so, like, the helmet is inside, and then how does it secure? There's a, a this is a new one. Usually for the artist, there's a secondary helmet that's okay. made to fit their head. It's like a bike helmet. I yeah. can totally see me wearing this exactly. on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how safe it would be with the I sword. Know, but <laughs> that's how you're going to get people out of your way. <laughs> and, and tuna. Then, and then our tuna. Would you like to wear our tuna? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> How many times have you been asked if you'd like to wear a tuna? I have to say this is my first, Amanda. You are my first. Okay, so what we're going to do is just going to slide straight over your head. Oh. And there's a hat inside, so you'll feel the hat. Oh, I sure do. How does it look? Tunalicious. <laughs> just stay away from any sushi joints. Oh, yes. Yeah. I think it fits like a glove. <laughs> okay, see you later. <laughs> She's out. And going hand in hand with wardrobe, the makeup. Each night before going on stage, surf performers put on their makeup. That's right, they do it themselves. Kelly, an acrobat from Seattle, let me sit in on her pre-show makeup routine. Everybody has their personalized look. 
It's a process that involves step after step after step. So we would work with our makeup artists and the makeup designers in Montreal at the headquarters, mm -hmm. and then they would teach us how to do it. Kelly told me it used to take her about two hours to complete her look, but now it takes 45 minutes. We would practice hours at a time, trying to teach us how to just hold the brush right. <laughs> a little contour. Well, actually, everybody on. loves a little contour. Since Kelly and the other performers run, jump, sweat, and perform in water, the makeup has to stay on. That's where the setting powder comes in. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Done. No. No. <laughs> I was like, that's a lot of powder. <laughs> Don't worry, she was kidding. This is the same makeup all the artists do. So even if they get in the water, this is the makeup that will stay. So that's really just the fixing powder. So now we kind of go over what we just did. Just a few more layers of color, and Kelly had transformed from human into a bird. It's a process she'll repeat 10 times every week. But whether it's a winged creature or a four-legged friend, when these costumes and makeup come to life on stage, it's because of hours of hard work and creative vision it took to create the beautiful illusion of Luzia. We hope that you enjoyed the behind-the-scenes look. And for more information on showtimes and tickets here in Houston, you can visit CirqueDuSoleil.com slash Luzia. Yeah, it's open just for a few more weeks, so go see it. Okay, so did you know that you spend one-third of your life asleep? Mm -hmm. That's a lot of pressure on your mattress. After the break, we're going to head inside a local factory to see what goes inside a mattress and how that affects your sleep. Don't go away. Well, you know, when it comes to food, we ask a lot of questions as consumers, like, where did this come from? Is it natural? Is it organic? Or is it healthy? But what about other products in our lives that we use every day? That is so true, Courtney. Most people begin and end their day on a mattress, so shouldn't we hold our mattresses to the same standards? I think that sounds yeah. reasonable, right? And I recently made a trip to Texas mattress makers to see how a mattress is actually made. Building a mattress takes a lot of work. And nobody knows that better than Yuval Meichler. We call him the mattress doctor because at Texas Mattress Makers, he's been making and selling high quality mattresses at a lower price for 40 years. Today, he's showing me how his mattresses are made. Every component is made in the USA and most of the products are from right here in Texas, starting with the lumber. This is so cool to watch. You can tell this guy's done it before. Each mattress is built to order. They even make custom mattresses. Our slowest manufacturing day is 400 pieces. Doesn't sound slow to me. Like on a really busy day, if you got a thousand orders, could they do a thousand? Yeah. A thousand in a day? Yeah. If you took all the folks you got in here, from the moment you cut the lumber, that you rip the lumber, that you shape the lumber, that you build the lumber, that you upholstered the box and you dropped it on the floor. Six minutes. Six minutes. And look at the quality too. That's what's incredible. Once I saw how the box springs are assembled, it was time for the main event. So now you're going into a quieter space, obviously. Here, instead of staple guns and saws, it was all about sewing machines and springs. Blue is this type of foam, and white is this type of foam. Got it. And as you'll see, I'll show you, we have numbers on our foam. The numbers dictate the actual compression and densities of it. Am I allowed to touch this stuff? You can touch anything you want. At Texas Mattress Makers, each mattress gets extra TLC. So I'll say this, you see all these folks that work here? They are actually very highly trained people. I have people here that can touch a piece of foam and can tell you the densities and the compression of it. 
Just by touching it. Just by touching it. Wow. Okay. The 100 employees at Texas Mattress Makers work hard, and they use some pretty cool equipment, too. This is the tape edge machine. It takes you just as long to do it right than it does to do it wrong. So you see this machine? This machine is a $50,000 machine, machine and a table. It's worth every penny of it. Some machines are the size of a truck. How many different needles and threads are in this machine? 18 needles, 18 top and bottom thread. But you can put up to 280 threads and needles, top and bottom thread. Ever wonder how foam looks before you end up sleeping on it? Well, here you go. So What's this happening machine here? is a slitter. So this machine will slice as thin as 3 16 And where does the foam come from? You guys source this locally in Texas? Waco, Texas. Waco, Texas, home of the foam, folks. So this is a giant block of foam Correct. before it's going to be sliced up. You're going to enjoy this. Sit on that. Sit on it? Yeah. yeah just relax. OK. This is viscoelastic. This is the product that everybody uses in the tempur type of foam mattresses. I'm still sinking. Yep. You will continue to sink until your weight bottoms out based on the type of compression that you have. And all this manufacturing also comes with a conscience. The other thing we do, we don't throw anything in the garbage can. Okay, we recycle everything. You do? Everything. We recycle all our lumber, we recycle all the plastic, we recycle all the cardboard, we recycle all the foam. I had no idea, Yuval, that's fantastic. When we deliver to you and we pick up an old mattress, uh -huh. we recycle the steel and everything else that's in it. Yuval, that makes me love you even more. Okay. That's awesome. What you see here will be sold, and you know what they're gonna make out of this? Two things, carpet padding, or beds for dogs. Mattresses from Texas mattress makers go even beyond the Texas border. You see, everything you see here is sold. Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, all the way up to Missouri. Wow. In Houston, we supply ourselves. Uh, so customers in Missouri could be going to their local mattress store and buying a mattress that's made right here. That is correct. And instead of buying a mattress from a big box store that might have been storing it for months, why not get something fresh? It doesn't get much fresher than this. And when were all of these mattresses made? Yesterday, yesterday, yesterday. Our business is we want to make the mattress that fits you. And we don't know what that means until you come here. So someone comes in, they see a mattress that they may like, they place the order, within a few days it's ready. Max five days. So all of these mattresses we see here right now that are ready to go, these aren't just waiting for buyers to come and buy them. These are sold. They just need to be picked up or shipped out. Of course, a great mattress doesn't just look and feel great. It's about the quality, local components that go inside. I always love a nice behind-the-scenes tour. I always love visiting with you. Thank you for spending time with us. Spending time to create local jobs and create a better night's sleep for Houstonians, one quality mattress at a time. And Texas Mattress Makers has a shop now and save huge sale happening right now with mattress sets starting at just $349. You can get in on the deal at both of their showroom locations and also online now at TexasMattressMakers.com. Well, we'll be right back with more Houston Life. <laughs> Oldest American, African-American theater in the Southwest, the Ensemble Theater. Plus, Harry Potter fans, listen up, where you can find the magic of the movies brought to life on stage Oh, my word. Yeah. A lot of super fans are going to love this. This is so cool. I was there for the rehearsals today, so we're going to tell you all about it coming up tomorrow. No wonder you flew in on that broom today. That explains it. You're terrible. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>